and if you want to have an extra period of six years, it's crucial that in the next uh, 10 months, we produce a substantial amount of results. Uh, I would say from the theoretical point of view, we are succeeding in making bridges between different groups, but we can improve this. I'm very happy to have you, Sergio, with us and Marcio. It's the first time, uh, I guess, Marcio is here for a meeting, a Neuromat meeting. Uh, Eva has, uh, is a, is a, is, has been visiting us every year, but this is the second time she's in a Neuromat meeting. But uh, of course, uh, the contribution of Eva to the theoretical model is outstanding. So uh, she, she was responsible for the, the fact that this model has been not only developed by ourselves, but also by other colleagues uh, elsewhere. And uh, so I, I think we are in a good position to show, uh, to present a very good report, very good report for FAPESP next October. Next October, we will have, we'll have the visit again of the evaluation committee. Uh, so uh, we are organizing a, a meeting as we did last year. So the name will be the same, I guess, uh, uh, random structures in the brain. And uh, so I count on, uh, I, I hope you'll be here next October. Uh, I will start sending you precisely the period. You know the period, Rocky, you remember? 16 to 20, uh, so uh, I invite you, Pablo, 16 to 20 November, I count on you. October, 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 October. Okay, so now um, maybe I ask uh, Marcio, who did not say anything until now, <laughs> to start, and uh, then, well, uh, I guess uh, Pablo maybe has some comments to do, and also Yoshiharu. Uh, but, I mean, we have been discussing a lot. Uh, we didn't have enough time to discuss about uh, the brain as statisticians the other day, and maybe we could continue. Okay, Marcio, please. Well, uh, 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 and you must come here if you uh, want Pablo to see you. You must be here. As far okay. as it works? Here. Pablo, yes. uh, so you can see yourself. I, I can Come see, see, yeah. see no. Marcio. Ciao, Marcio. Ciao. No, okay, I, I have not many things to say, just two, two, two things I would like to stress. The first one is that as far as the theoretical progresses, the Kinushi proposal is, are a good starting point just to make some attempts to do some of the things. Maybe we should tell people because they're not aware of... Uh, no, they are because they received the audit received the letter by by Kinushi. Yeah, ah, yes, it was sent to everybody. It was sent to everybody. And the second point that I would like to have more um, simulation sur le GL, GL model. And if n equal uh, 10 to the 5, as you are using, is too big, it just to, to work with n to the, the 3, to be able to, to study more detail, for instance, the the, the behavior of the WIG, uh, because in this way, n square is equal to your n. <laughs> do you think is it possible to do something like this? It, it did make, did you spend a lot of time to get this result of the paper that you did with? Uh, because to no, get no. some more detailed result, and possibly on the GL, the real GL model, and not the variation that you did discuss uh, others because there is a slight difference in, in the model but anyway uh, yes we can implement a, uh, the original version if you want yeah but anyway you no because to have we have a, a program to, that to we can uh, we have a, uh, a program that we can ask the question that will arise <laughs> in the theoretical research so it would be nice to have a immediate possibility to check this hypothesis of this before proving the theorems, it's always very hard to have at least an encouragement from the simulation and uh, the, the numerical calculation. Well, maybe both, but I think uh, we need some people to help us, some students, because yes. the students see each one is working. I think on we a already project. have your project. We, we have the, yeah. the, 
there are no we have justification no, no, to yeah, be done to, to get change, it. Yeah, more, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. It's possible to do that, yeah, yeah of course. Okay. Okay. So, but, but what is the suggestion exactly to, to do it not in the mean future of measures? But, but they already some part did. Yes. But uh, to have a, the real model with n of the, the suitable order that you can manage to, with the time, machine time, and to, to have a program that we can ask questions and get uh, the answer. Just to see if we want to prove something, to have a, a simulation that uh, confirms it or not, would be very useful. Will be a line of, uh, to continue in, uh, in the search. I, I, I don't know what you mean by the version that uh, Ludmilla et al. published, because the version that I'm simulating is more, gener it's more general than the one that, uh, because in our version the one we have that I know two well. populations, excitation and inhibition is not mean field, so it's... No, I know it's not mean yeah, yeah, For instance, the, the IJ, yeah, they are distributed yeah, with this have, uh, uh, two, two uniform two signs for the weights. You can yeah. control the sigma using yeah. the upper mm -hmm. bound. This, this I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's but to, to, to instance, to, to describe also the dynamical definition of the omega j, like Abadi was suggesting with the system of couplet equation for omega j, to be able to, to get to the critical point, not just uh, assuming a priori that you have the sigma equal to one, but to have a dynamics of the links that are sort of Self made in a way to that you get directly to this point. To have some results in this direction, I think, this this direction, I yeah, think also is doing some simulations of the, with Ariadne, no? Yes, with Ariadne. They are doing, I think you're, you're closer to this than us, in a sense. Okay. Yeah. So so. Yes, yeah. this is a line of research that I, I would like yeah. really to follow and to or see what comes or out or of it. You, you didn't have time to show your simulations, that's probably why he's asking that, because well, if you... The ones that we are doing were Ariadne. Yes, the, the, yes, the last one I didn't read yet. Yes, uh, these are results, are results about uh, dynamical gains that are similar to dynamical synapses. I already published it in Ludmilla paper. Yeah, and it works very well. Yeah, but you know Ludmilla paper. But Ludmilla. <laughs> No, no, there is just one. It's the one we read. Uh, in there is Nacional. only one paper. The, the scientific reports paper. See, but yes, but this is a model in which mu is equal to zero. No, 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 no. The simulations, he's asking about ah. simulations. Simulations can be done with any mu. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, Osami is doing the simulations of the uh, GL model with uh, mu different... Uh, Different than zero. Enemy, so, yeah, yeah. And, enemy. Uh, yeah. The uh, analytic results are only for me yeah. equal to zero. Yeah, yeah. So the analytic. Yeah. The simulations are already being. Simulations are general. Yeah, we didn't have time to discuss the simulations that Osami. Uh, we discussed the simulations that I'm doing. Yes. Which are somewhat more, say, general. We're not using the same learning rules that uh, actually are not using any plasticity apart from the ones that Renan mentioned. But uh, we can try and implement a version of the model with. 10 to the 5 or any, any uh, and, and uh, perhaps not not not, for, not to yeah because that's one of the advantages of the one of the advantages of the model is that i mean it's very efficient to be implemented numerically so we can do that yes discrete time but perhaps not to self-organize it to the critical point but for the balanced point yeah we, that's we, another our, issue. our idea but some, yeah. some people a similar accept equation things for which are the not balanced the point. point sorry yeah. Some people can accept things outside the critical point. Some people well, accept but, it. Well, but our group is different. <laughs> there is first order transitions, not only yeah, second but you order. Yeah, the machine time. When you are at the critical point, it's much longer. To what? <laughs> no, what we want to do, as he said, is to see if we can self-organize self to get to this balanced state. Yes. This is the uh, it's uh, another the issue. Idea that we so, but just to, just to be clear, so I guess Pablo is wondering what have, what, what we are discussing now. So, uh, 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 tell Pablo what is your question. Pablo, what is your question? Pablo, what is your question? Pablo, already exists some papers about the numerical simulation of the model, variation of the model of uh, Galvez and Lockerbach. And I would like to have more results Mainly, I would, what I would like to have, have a program. No, you, you have a problem there. <laughs> <laughs> so you have good, 
Do you have simulations of phase transition for that model? Not necessarily phase transition. The model but has a regime are... with phase transition and in some values of parameters we have a phase transition for other models. Okay. Okay. So no, I'm asking if you have the simulations of that. They already have some, but I would like to have some more uh, results and to be able to ask more questions about the model when the, and the, the, the analytical analysis will continue just to have some check of what we expect to get. Mm -hmm. That's all. No, that's great, yeah. So, okay, Pablo, that's a question for you. You, you, you said about phase transition. So, yes. uh, simulations, numerical simulations, suggest, strongly suggest that you have the following situation. When you have the model, so uh, every time I, I speak model, I've been this model I've been discussing, and some yeah. people call it GL, but not me. I call it in an easy way, interacting system of a change with is memory of variable length, which... <laughs> GL, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now, uh, suppose you have this model and you consider the graph of interaction fixed and uh, you put, uh, you put uh, and, and also the, f the f uh, rate function fixed in any one you want, linear, whatever. But then you fix it, you fix the W, the synapse weights, but then you have a, 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 a leaky effect. You, you lose your membrane potential yeah. at a constant rate. So mm -hmm. simulations with finite huge systems suggest to have phase transition. That was what uh, uh, Miguel presented to us this morning. It is difficult to state the theorem, but uh, it's clear that when the, the leak rate, um, when, well, the leakage effect is very small. You don't leak very much. You almost don't have leakage. It's clear that uh, for the finite system, we stay very, very long time in a metastable situation. It seems that you are in equilibrium. Mm. But you know you are not in equilibrium because the theoretical result by uh, uh, Aline and Guilherme shows that uh, at the end, they stop spiking. But yeah. when you see the simulation, it looks like it is in equilibrium. So it's very much like the metastable situation you can find in the contact process. But if the leak effect is very, uh, is very important, so you see the simulation to vanish very fast to the situation in which there is no more spiking activity. So this suggests that if you are in the infinite volume case, you have, you have uh, two situations. Mm -hmm. Call lambda the leak rate, so you have at least two critical points. For lambda, very big, so you leak a lot. You have just one invariant measure. For lambda very small, you have two invariant measures, or zero, or another thing. And maybe there is an intermediate, intermediate phase in between, which, Yoshi, that's for you, which depends on the graph. Because we have seen results for the contact process. The contact process on the integer in, in the, on, on the lattice has just one critical point and two phases. But, but in, some, uh, in some trees, they have three phases. Yes? I think, that could be, I think there could be even more interesting behavior if you have spiking weight functions, which are power functions, with a power which is bigger than one. I guess that in the two-bull paper they showed, but only numerically, that there are even three possible invariant states. Two-bull. Two-bull? Yeah. Two -bull. So that, that you could also yeah, try to... But yeah, Jonathan, two-bull wrote a paper which is basically of the same kind than the paper that uh, we had the last talk about just before lunch. And they show that in the, in the limit, in the mean field limit, if you have a spiking weight function, which is a power function, depending on the power, you could have three invariant measures. But it's only numerics, but it could be, could be exploited numerically. That's an interesting question. It's an interesting question because probably the, the in graph of interactions plays a role there. Uh, we don't have any idea about it. So Tobul wrote a paper, and apparently uh, there are gaps in the proof. 
Some people who was maybe referee claims that there was a gap in the proof. I don't know who, but maybe. So this is an interesting question. And this question, Pablo, I think can be done. That we never really tried to do this. Recently, uh, when uh, Eva uh, was in, uh, I you was need, in. You I need to face transition kind of con like in the contact process that you have. I, I, something like this, yes. So when uh, uh, last, uh, last July we, have, we were together with Rico, Marx, and Eva in L'Aquila, and Rico provided uh, a very easy example of situation of phase transition for our model outside the conditions of our existence, with initial existence results. So I guess there is a world to be done there. Okay, so that's one question. Um, uh, Remember, there is three parameters in the model. Uh, the leakage, me or the W, and the, the gain, the gain of the phi function, which you call gamma, gamma, large gamma, in the Ludmilla paper, the gain. So uh, there is not a critical point, a critical surface in this three-dimensional space, okay? And what Mars was f talking is, is that also we have mechanisms to pull the system towards this, this surface from any initial condition. Frankly, I, I am afraid that if you put too many variables, it would be very difficult. You see, uh, Miguel is one of the top experts in the world at level, international level to prove uh, uh, asymptotic results but on heating times. And it has been quite difficult to prove for this particular model. It's surprising because M Miguel did it for uh, dynamic system. So I'm, I'm afraid we must well, to simplify. But I don't w is the standard uh, parameter, well, uh, control I, parameter. Uh, I think w. we should try to um, better understand what is the simplest version of it in which we still can have or not phase transition. Okay, is W not not uh, not I, 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 the parameters are already uh, in I, the model. I, I just I would like to have just one parameter. The, the, okay, the, the, perhaps the leakage rate. Okay, W. <laughs> it's better W. Uh, most of the literature is about W, crit critical W. But most of the literature does not prove phase transition. So, uh, and if you uh, no uh, by by okay, but this is the question. Uh, there is another interesting question. So, uh, when I, uh, uh, Enrico suggests the following situation. It's a very uh, elementary situation. Consider the neurons are uh, uh, in the set of integers. Every integer is a neuron. And now you consider the following situation, two, uh, two extreme situations. A neuron I only affects neuron i plus 1. So i is an integer, i plus 1 is the next step. That's all they, they do, and they do it by, uh, by adding plus 1 to the next one. And you have a fixed rate of doing this. And now you start with every board having uh, positive membrane potential, maybe membrane potential equal to one. Uh, and then he made the following observation. When you have two neurons with a positive membrane potential, which are neighbors, if this one has a spike, it resets to zero, and he adds plus one to the next one. So if you consider the proportion of neurons, the density of neurons, which have a strictly positive membrane potential, this density decreases. This is not a proof, it's an intuition, but it's almost a proof. And then, probably, you can prove the following. When we start with every board uh, with a positive membrane potential, and you, con you compute the density of sites with the positive membrane potential, this number, let's call it um, D of T, D as density. D of T is a decreasing function. How fast does it go to zero? We don't know. We don't know. 
Now, if you look at a single neuron, um, probably after some time, uh, he has, most of the time, he has zero membrane potential. But then there is a kind of wave coming from the left side to the right side. So from time to time, a plus one will jump on it. Why? Well, because uh, a uh, 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 every time a, a neuron spikes, it, it goes to zero and adds plus one to the next one. So mm. it's like a, 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 a wave. But the wave in which the distance between neurons with a positive membrane is increases all the time. So if you look at the fixed neuron, you see uh, uh, infinitely many times that it, it, it receives a, a potential one and then it spikes. So uh, you ha see the situation in which we don't have a convergence to zero. You have an infinite number of spikes for every neuron. But now, the distance between successive spikes becomes longer and longer because it takes, uh, you, the distance is greater. So if you look at the fixed interval of time and you shift it in time, the probability of having a spike there goes to zero. So it's a very nice situation without leaks, without everything. Now, do the following. You decide for each neuron to give uh, two possible interactions. With the probability P, it does not interact with anybody. It's an autistic neuron. With the probability I, uh, 1 minus P, it interacts with uh, its two neighbors. So you prepare your system like this. It's clear that you have islands, groups of neurons separated by two autists, which does not integrate, it does not uh, cooperate with the others. And therefore, for each choice of the initial configuration, you have a different, a, a, a different limit. Because in the situation, the, the island which has positive uh, at least one neuron with the positive membrane, this goes, will go on forever. If, you, is un, if, if the, the group of neurons is unlucky, are in an island without a positive membrane, so that's it. So this shows that this system, in a very easy situation, may have infinitely many invariant measures. So this is not interesting enough to be published in a paper. But it's an interesting observation to see how the graph of interactions can affect without the need of in, in introducing leaky effects. So the system is much more difficult than you can uh, think about. You don't need to put so many factors. So that was a discussion. Enrico found it in the way Enrico does, uh, using intuition. I spent three days with master doing comp hand computations to go anywhere. where each GL element is a compartment along the axis. Okay, we thought about it, so we suggest to, to, to people, uh, I guess I, I even suggested to Achilleas, uh, to do this in more unidimensional, gra in unidimensional graphs. For instance, to prepare a graph like a Galton Watson model is, is slightly above the critical value. But I mean, this is something has, has to, to be done. Uh, I'm thinking about another result. In our first paper with Eva, we have been thinking, uh, so we said, well, it's very easy to, inv to create a model, but uh, is our model reasonable? So we went to the literature to see what kind of uh, results, experimental results we can find. And we found this result uh, by Gold uh, Farb, Gold Farb from the 50s. I, well, this is a paper about uh, the correlations between consecutive spiking times of a single neuron, and which we show that this uh, has very small correlations. So 
to, prove, to see if your model has this property, we are obliged to specify the graph of interactions. And then we did the best we could do at that point was to use an Erdos-Henyi random graph. And first we tried to do it using a classical result by Bela Bolobash about uh, the fact that uh, people who interact with you, people who interact with people who interact with you and so on, looks like a tree if you don't, do not go very far away. And then we, uh, we discovered that we could do it by hand without using the result if we are slightly above the critical value. So we did it. And we had an upper bound for the, for the degree uh, for the correlation. Then a natural question, I guess, uh, Carlos Open is working on this with a student now, right now, is to do it for, uh, more, uh, for a bigger interval above the critical value for the erdos model. I remember the first time we presented this result at Marseille, not remember if it was Eva or me who presented, but a student asked us, um, do you believe it's serious to, uh, to, uh, to assume that uh, the brain has an erdos Heni graph? I we said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that was the best we could do. And then we found the Bags and Plans paper who said that they claim it's an erdos Heni model. So now I can say, no, we did it because uh, it was based on experimental evidence. So it was just a lucky coincidence. So this is an interesting question to see if we can uh, do results like this for other types of graphs. For instance, for graphs of the type uh, um, exponential graphs, which are very fashionable nowadays. So I, I have a, um, a general question on your remark, on your, uh, for your, the example you gave that, so you, you illustrated a simple dynamics and how it changes from a unidimensional graph when you change the rules of interaction between, uh, between elements and you, uh, in a higher dimension or whatever, it, it changes the, the dynamics of the network. So, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, so, uh, I wanted to, to, to know if there are any statistical tools that would allow us to m do statistical model selection on graphs, let's say uh, 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 based on a, a, a desired uh, dy dynamics of the population. So let's say, uh, for instance, I, I, I have a set, I have set of, uh, uh, the, the rules of the dynamics, let's, let's say, is... You have a set of what? Uh, the rules of the dynamics are set. They're fixed. Each uh, element on the... Let's say, uh, let's say all that I have are the vertices, are the, the elements in the, in the network. Uh, the number of elements I have... Uh, each element is, has, a, has to obey a, a, a certain dynamics. And let's say I have a desired uh, population uh, dynamics at the end. Uh, so, the, the uh, thing that I want to observe, let's say, firing rates, uh, synchrony, desynchrony, whatever. Uh, so, how do I uh, select how these elements are going to be connected such that I'll obtain the desired effect? So, you have uh, a, spy, uh, a, a raster plot, uh, experimental data, which, uh, in which you, you, you see a certain behavior. And then you say, let's assume that this set of neurons evolve uh, following, for instance, uh, the model I've been discussing. B the only thing we don't know is the graph of interactions. Uh, and your question is, if I can find the graph of interaction, if, if I can do, so, uh, so if I can get the, 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 the uh, if I can have, is there any procedure to make a statistical model selection of the graph, the graphs that would satisfy the, the, when the network would satisfy uh, that the, the observed condition? But this is what you are, you are doing right now. <laughs> I think we should discuss with Ludmilla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it was a rhetoric question or a real question? <laughs> <laughs> no, it really was a, a like a, um, I think maybe, maybe I'm thinking more more ge in a more generic uh, set. So so let's say for instance, uh, let's say forget what uh, what we're doing right now and the the exactly. So, so let's say I don't wanna I, I don't wanna I, I don't have any constraint about the the real data. I just want to ob observe a certain phenomenon, like the, like synchrony or dyssynchrony, a more general feature. So, uh, so in our case, in our case, for instance, a general feature that we wanted to to. So, in our uh, the case, the the the, the work with, we we've do, we've done this this year, we've set the, the graph is set. Uh, so, if I if I if I um, if I'm using a fi finite number of neurons, everybody's connected to everybody with a fixed uh, a fixed value of synapse, and we uh, we observe the dynamics, how the dynamics change according to a certain parameter, to certain parameters, right? So we observe that uh, uh, um, that the, the, the I mean, so at, at, at the end of the, so the second part of the paper is exa exactly. Uh, setting how dynamical dyna setting dynamical uh, gains and the other work uh, uh, that Ariagini had with Ozami said dynamical synapses to, to uh, in order to keep the, the the network working on on uh, on in, in criticality, right? So uh, I'm just thinking more of like in a generic way if you could do the the other way around. Uh, uh, knowing absolutely nothing about the the graph, like uh, how, for instance, in this case, how I get to to work, to operate in a, cri uh, for instance, critical set, uh, critical to observe, uh, critical like avalanches or whatnot, and knowing absolutely nothing about the the graph. At first, I don't because I, we always I, I, know I something I, about I, the graph. I, I understood. No, I didn't understand. No, uh, 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 look, I, I could try to make several interpretations of your question. One question is the following. Uh, to do what you are doing right now, but adding an extra restriction. I want to find uh, a graph uh, given the data. I want to find a graph which fulfills uh, maximum likelihood, penalize, penalize maximum likelihood criterion. And moreover, I want this graph to be of the following type, a, a graph that is an exponential graph, or a graph which is a, um, a small world graph. So uh, I think this is something interesting. I, I don't know how to do, but uh, you say, I want to make model selection for GL model, but restricted to graphs which have some some other feature. I guess this is the most important question. I wish I knew how to do it. I remember Pablo in the past wrote a paper with Freiman uh, uh, and other people on, um, on the identification of a certain class of graphs, which are trees. Yeah. That's correct. So why don't you say a few words about it? Do you think this can be used, Pablo, somehow? I don't know. No, in that case, we were putting a distance and defining kind of a median for in graphs. And to find that, uh, we used some algorithm uh, like uh, a Lafort Fulkerson. But it's a bit complicated to, to say it in a couple of words. So, but, but th th that was so. But uh, so the restriction was that uh, you, are, you have you are looking for a special type of graphs which are rooted the trees yeah. with labels, yeah. which is a particular class of tree. So yeah. that was so this restriction. You have a sample of that, and then you will, you are looking like like for the median, say. Of and there was as as, as math so definition of a median. So, yeah. And you have also a notion of a central limit theorem there. Well, uh, this was more classic in some standard setup. No, nothing. Well, in graph is not. No, well, uh, the, finally you, uh, you you put them as a sum of independent random variables. So. Uh, I could I couldn't hear. No, so uh, this was you put this in some set, some setup that the sum of independent or 
mixing random variable that will be ah. converged. So you know that that was not uh, very good. But do you want to make some? So uh, uh, you are one of the top researchers in the world on interacting Markov interacting particle systems. Uh, our model, if you consider l l exponential leak effect, uh, yeah. it's, it's, and you consider the time evolution of the membrane potential, is a Markovian system in a complicated a, yeah, a in R. You can make it a particle system. Also, if you look uh, at the, the energies instead of looking at the spikes, but you know that is uh, you can do it uh, like a particle, like a zero range process, but with a long range, no, in fact, or a continuous um, spin, say. And then uh, the question of uh, phase transition that you were looking is very similar to the case of the contact process. When you have uh, in the contact process, you get uh, infected with a rate that is proportional. Uh, could be linear or not. In, there are some cases when the rate is not linear, but it's not at the beginning it was linear in the number of neighbors. You get infected and then you get, uh, say, uh, cured or uh, you, you come back to, to safe, say, with a um, constant rate. And then, um, then if the rate uh, for infection is big, then at infinite volume you can have an invariant measure that is not trivial. So you, more or less, what you want to do is something similar, but I feel that it's much more complicated in this uh, setup because in the contact process we have a lot of, uh, of tools like uh, duality and monotonicity that you help you to do couplings. And, um, and show results. So you have some continuity of parameters and things like that. Here you don't have a monotonicity and don't, I don't believe that you have um, anything like duality besides this uh, generalized duality that is used to show the existence of the process. But yes, well, uh, you have this generalized duality. So Pablo yeah. means the Kalikov, uh, the decomposition. Yeah. Uh, one thing we could ask is if you are able to do perfect simulation for the model, but not in the specific case Evan I did uh, in which you just have one, one invariant measure, but uh, in a case in which you have phase transition by using an idea similar to the one you used with the clan of ancestors for um, contours. What was the name? Loss. What's the name? Loss. Uh, loss networks. But um, no, I am very pessimistic. Yeah. Uh, in infinite volume, no, I don't believe you can do anything like that. Because you, you will have because your tree is um, something that is super critical in that case, and then will grow up, and you cannot control anything. So, because in the case of subcritical, in the case when you have um, existence and you have uniqueness simultaneously, because uh, this clan of, of ancestors uh, is dominated by a subcritical branching process and then disappears, and then you can control everything. But uh, if, uh, if you are in a regime of uh, two invariant measures, then the, the clan of ancestors necessarily will will have infinite, will, will, cannot, you cannot dominate for something that, uh, that will die. So the clan of ancestors will grow uh, to infinity. Uh, well, if you are in Z, uh, you will grow at a linear rate or polynomial rate, but if, if you are in a tree, it will grow exponentially fast. So I don't think you can do that there. Okay, uh, I guess what we learned with Eric last July is that if you look at the specific case, uh, we find things we didn't imagine when you stayed at a general case. So I think what I would like to ask you, Pablo, is to think of specific cases and try to see if uh, with your imagination we could find what, what he could did. So uh, I tried with the master to do by hand uh, 
computations, uh, and it was impossible. And then he said, well, but look, two neurons, when one spike, the density diminishes, and it was. Uh, uh, Yoshi, would like to say a few words Hi, Pablo. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice uh, right, so I kind of, I was thinking what to say. I don't have much to say, but I can uh, say the following. So at the beginning, at the beginning of this project, when uh, Antonio came to me and was uh, kind of very excitedly talking about graphs and brains, um, it's, it's definitely true that there's, there's this huge literature about uh, graphs that you obtain from data that you measure in one way or another. Uh, and, uh, and you do, well, you do some very ad hoc things to produce these graphs. And then you also measure things that are not maybe perhaps too sophisticated from the graph theoretical point of view. So I kind of thought that this would be an interesting thing, interesting thing to try and explore. And at the time I had a very basic question which I, well, okay, the basic question is the following. So you have, if, if you have, um, so usually you have signals, maybe you have some number, which is actually not so big, maybe N signals, they could be time series or something like that. Uh, and then you somehow have some reason or you have some definition, some notion of interaction between these two signals. Uh, and then to produce a graph from these N signals, you, decide that some, you use some kind of thresholding. So this is something you learn or you, you see a lot in the literature and this was one of the first things that I also saw. Uh, but then at the time, I, I, I think it's one of the few things that I wrote in the project, I asked Antonio about, um, all right, so to, to study this, to, to, take, to, to see any significance in data, the graphs that you obtain from real data. One should know what happens in the case in which all the signals are independent, uh, right? So, and, uh, and actually, I must say, I tried a, a few calculations with this in some very simple cases. So for instance, plus minus one vectors uh, on, in D dimensions. And uh, you could define two signals to be related, correlated, if they're in a product. So the in expected inner product is zero in this case. So if the inner product is at least, uh, I don't know, some, some number, like root n, uh, so you choose the number so that the probability of interaction between two independent signals is something like half, uh, that would give a model of random graph. So this, I perhaps you could say it's some random graph in which uh, so it's a vertex-oriented random graph. What is random is what you associated to vertices. Uh, and in, in the usual erdos rainy model, you have uh, edges independent. Uh, okay, so I, I kind of tried to do some calculations with this vertex-oriented random graph. It's not so easy, kind of the calculation gets messy. But I learned very recently that this model is actually, uh, has been studied. Uh, and it's quite surprising. So, for instance, this Erdos Rainey does show up um, in two ways. So, let me try to say uh, the two ways. You could try to measure, so I defined some model of random graphs, right? So, you can, I said you could take uh, as concrete, uh, the concrete example of plus minus one signals, vectors of plus minus ones, let's say of dimension D, you have N of them, and you get a graph on N vertices. Uh, and of course you can and then you decide, well, I want a graph of density one half, then you have to compute, you have to use as your threshold cut the probability for two such vectors to have in a product at least a threshold. Okay, so this, this defines some kind of a uh, random so, graph. So, uh, yes. Say it again, say it again, okay. how right. you make your uh -huh. threshold. Right. Okay, so I have n vectors plus minus one vectors, and there are vectors of dimension t. Now, the inner product is uh, zero, the expected inner product of such two such vectors. 
uh, because the inner product is just a sum of independent random plus minus one variables, right? So you expect it to be zero, and you expect a deviation of root n from zero. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Now, you could say, well, I would like to define a graph such that every, every two vertices are connected with probability one half. So you could say, I choose some constant C, such that if I see an inner product which is at least C times root n, uh, then I put an edge. So I choose C so that I put an edge with probability one half. Right, so half tells me what kind of deviation I consider to be high. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So this is a very simple model, uh, but it's but there is some correlation between the edges because if if two vectors are kind of the initial vectors are independent, they are totally independent. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the case in which you have uh, n things; they don't know anything about any uh, one another, and you you kind of see this data and you say, well, I do this thresholding method to define a graph. And the question is, what do you see? You shouldn't see anything, right? So mm -hmm. it's kind of a OK, so I, I, I tried to compute a little bit with this, but it's, the calculation is a little bit messy. Uh, but actually, some people have done some calculations, not in, at least I am not, not as a, I'm not sure, but so the, not about this model, but the model, very similar model in which the vectors are not plus minus ones, but they are vectors, unit vectors in some d-dimensional sphere. It's kind mm -hmm. of similar, mm -hmm. different but similar, right? Does it make sense? So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, right. If this model, as it turns out, uh, a lot of it, quite a bit about it is known. I learned very recently, as I said. Uh, so, for instance, if you know, so again, now, now, now it's like this. So you have a sphere of dimension in D dimensions, and you randomly pick points on this sphere, right? And you join two, so, so these points are the signals. Now you join two if, so again you expect the inner product zero, but if their inner product is uh, positive, slightly positive, and you define some threshold, what you mean by positive or slightly positive, so you choose the threshold so that uh, you, have, you in the end get a graph with density one half. So. So the probability to have an edge is one half. Is that it? I'm, the probability of an edge is one half. Yes, you okay. choose the angle. So you say if the angle okay. between two, must be at, yeah, must be at uh, smaller than something, yeah. then then it's. But you, so the, but the edges, of course, are dependent. The presence. The of edges. The edges are in. The edges are dependent, right? Yeah. But so this is a random graph, which is vertex-oriented in the sense that the vertices are completely random. But the mm -hmm. edges are dependent, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So and so if you don't understand this case in which all the vertices are independent, it's kind of difficult to imagine that you can prove theorems about the case in which you want to see some kind of dependence uh, among the signals. So I kind of thought this was a good model to study. Uh, and but it's so okay. So that you can check, that you can uh, compare this graph with the Erdős-Rényi graph in at least two ways. So one is a very basic way, is to, is, uh, and that's the following. So you have this model, which defines a random graph. It's a distribution on, on graphs on n vertices. And you have erdos rheny So you could compute the total variation distance between these two distributions. And you could ask, under what circumstances you will have uh, total variation distance uh, small, uh, big and small, right? So you want to. And of course, to do that, you have to, so I, I, I always said you, you define the threshold to be one half. So of course, you use GNP, you use erdos rheny with P equals one half. That's what makes sense, right? Uh, OK, and the theorem uh, is. But, uh, but this is one half over n, right? I'm sorry? It's over n. No, so I choose the threshold so that the edge probability is one half. So on the sphere, on the sphere is something like, I think you want the inner product to be at least some constant div divided by root That's n because. But it's uh, but so you do not rescale with the number of vectors the the probability of. Uh, 
Uh, no, so you choose the probability in such a way that the density is one half. Uh -huh. So in the case of the sphere, the numbers work out, okay. I believe, in the following way. Uh, so the inner product is zero, expectation is zero. But if you say, okay, what is the probability that the inner product is something like constant over root n? No, 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 yeah. Then you get one half if you choose the constant right. No, but then I am worried because how you compare with order of Renier that you have a probability that is inversely proportional to the number of vertices. No, I would like to, no, I mean the dense case. I would like to think about the case in which the graph Please is. take you one has, half of uh, yeah, okay. the Yeah, 50% of the, of the uh, okay. edges. Yeah. So you, I, don't, you will not rescale that. So to get, no, I, will, I want a probability one half. So it's a very uh, okay. dense, okay. very dense random. Uh, okay, okay. okay. Actually, apparently, this result is known for, for the constant density case. Who, mm -hmm. who, who, who wrote this paper? I would have to check. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the first theorem, so this first theorem is by De Vroy and Lugoshi uh, and uh, two or three co-authors. I, I hope this is not being recorded, right? Hmm? <laughs> Maybe this is being transmitted but not yes. recorded. It is being recorded. I should check the name. No, 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 okay, okay. I can no, tell no. you the name. You, you, no. you send it. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, there are some co authors I didn't mention. So. No, okay, uh, De Vroy and co authors. No, no, no. Well, I mean, if I were a co author, maybe I, <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Yeah, well, I actually, okay. Uh, so they proved that if, if, the, if, um, if, the, if the number of vertices is fixed, and the dimension goes to infinity, then the total variation distance is, goes to zero. So erdos rheini and this model are the same. Ah, okay. So, uh, yeah. so, yes. the, uh, so the, the... Yes? The edges become independent. Yeah, the right. Edges. The edges become independent. And the two models are very similar. The, I mean, they're, uh, they're identical because the total variation distance goes to zero. Now mm -hmm. this, so, but, but, the, but, the, but the hypothesis was n is fixed and d goes to infinity. So it's kind of... The uh, number of vertices is fixed, is fixed and, and the dimension, the dimension goes to infinity. Also, so right. Oh, okay. it's, then it's very intuitive, it's very natural. Now, uh, so, but I'm, so, okay, so this was a result of De Vroy, Andras Jury, Gabor Lugoshi, and Frederic Udina. Uh, but this is already at least something like five years old. But this has been improved, uh, and now Sebastian Bubek, Jan Ding, Ronan Eldan, and Miklos Rach proved that it's enough if the dimension is at least n cubed. So, you, so it has to go to infinity, but it's not really so fast. It's just n cubed is enough for total variation. And this n cubed is, is sharp, so if it's, if it's if it's little of n cubed, if the dimension is little of n cubed, then the graphs, uh, the, the total variation distance between these two distributions goes to one. So they're very different. So this is known. So, um, uh, but then, so this is one thing. But this is maybe you're comparing two random graph models very precisely, right? Because you really want to be the same model. Now there's some other, so I, I will now switch a little bit. And um, apparently if you compare in some different way, so let's say I compare in the following, uh, I, I will say the two graphs are similar. If I do the following test and I get similar numbers, right? The test is I fix a subgraph, let's say a triangle, and I, I, I compute the density of triangle. So I compute how many triples of vertices divided by n cubed. So how many triples of vertices are contain three edges? And I divide this by n cubed. So this gives me the density of triangles in my graph. This is one statistic, right? Mm -hmm. Triangle statistic. You could do this for, for all subgraphs up to 10 vertices, let's say. Right, so that would be a bunch of statistic, statistics that I could compute about the graph. And I could say the two graphs are similar if this statistics is kind of similar. Uh, I could make this more precise by saying, yeah, okay, now let me just stop it that way. I let, let's say I could say the two graphs are similar if their 10 statistics are similar. And 10 statistics, I mean 
I count subgraphs up to 10 vertices, I compute their densities, and I get a, then I, I get a huge vector, one entry for every subgraph. Right? I compare these two vectors in some way, and if, it, and if these two vectors are similar, I say that the two graphs are similar. So this is one way of measuring uh, similarity between graphs. Uh, and and it's, it's very different from, uh, so you, have, you can have two graphs that are very different, but have the same, have very similar 10 statistics. Uh, okay, if you use this measure, then the theorem becomes much more, uh, the hypothesis you require for these two random graph models to be similar, the hypothesis becomes much weaker. So previously, the hypothesis was that the dimension was at least n cubed. But in this case, it's enough if it's log, log of n raised to some 1 plus epsilon for n epsilon. So you can, in the sphere, you can put, so you, if you invert, if you fix the dimension and you ask how many points you can put there to see a graph which looks like erdos rheini in this other metric. The number of points you can put there is something like 2 to the d to the 1 minus epsilon. So it's really, you can put nearly exponentially many vertices there. And you, s you don't see any difference between erdos rheini and this vertex-oriented random graph model. Uh, as long as the only thing you see is finite subgraph statistics. So this kind of says that erdos rheini is very common. So um, even if you have this dependence between the edges. But anyway, yeah, so the, in this, yeah, right, so this is. Okay, so I, I guess your point is that we, uh, so Eldoshkeni is something you can find the features of Eldoshkeni in many different types of construction, right. including exponential. Uh, right, yeah. but then exponential will have to be in some high, yes. high energy and high temperature, mm -hmm. otherwise, yeah. Right. So like every, every single. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I guess we still have to develop a, a, a better comprehension of what are the random graph issues which will be necessary to better understand all dynamic models. And this is something we have, we have, we have to do. Uh, in any case, our next meeting in October, the name will be Random Structures in the Brain. I hope Hank will be able to return here. Uh, my friends, uh, I still have two points, to, but I think we are running out of time. No, okay, no, no, I... Uh, uh, well, uh, no, oh, oh, okay, but, but, but people in neurobiology have been telling us that random graphs are important. I did not, uh, when I arrived, uh, there was all this, uh, there, so we need to better understand these issues. Well, I, I, I would like to discuss two other things, but I would not because we're running out of time. So the two other things are associated to the, to the, uh, experimental protocol, cloud uh, and co-authors have been developing about the brain being able to retrieve uh, uh, the structure of the cells producing the stimuli. So one of the things I'd like to discuss, but this will be done in another uh, meeting, is an idea that Stoffer has been telling me, and it's very convincing. Uh, he tells me, look, you like uh, context-free models because you have been influenced by people in computer science, by jean marie Sonny. but you can produce the same chain with a different uh, description, either a probabilistic cellular automata or whatever, uh, either with a uh, deterministic uh, sequence you repeat and then you modify from that. So, so, and he's right. So I think something we like this we must discuss in particular because if you take, for instance, the data of EEG we recorded in the experiment with, with Claudia, and instead of looking for a tree, 
and that the tree's signature will look for a different signature, maybe it's succeeding better, succeed better. And this maybe will tell us that the brain, instead of doing context trees like uh, computer scientists, uh, maybe the brain does something much clever. It's a possibility. So I think that's the most important issue. We almost died together because he told me while I was driving my car, my mother said, no, look, let's stop, have dinner, otherwise we will die discussing this. The other thing is that uh, uh, Serge Neuschwander is uh, intends to develop um, a, a, a paradigm like the one, we, a protocol like the one we proposed for, uh, for um, visual cortex. Uh, with human beings and with primates. And I think this is the most important uh, progress. If you succeed doing this, an important bridge will be built between several teams. So I, I hope this something will succeed doing in the next months. Uh, I guess it's time to say goodbye. We will meet again several times. For sure there will be a meeting. Pablo, take the We will organize a meeting only to discuss the stochastic model we have been discussing. Because we have a lot of fine things. For instance, Pablo, uh, the team of Ribeirão Preto has evidence the, that a, a feature that most people claim that's reality, just wrong. It's not there. They claim that they have seen things that apparently, uh, and people who are friends of us, not enemies, so they reproduced what they did, and they did not find it. So uh, 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 it's time to start discussing with uh, the team and Yulish, but also with the probabilists about this. So there will be a meeting dedicated to the, to only to the stochastic model of neural nets in the first semester. And then in October, there will be the meeting with everybody and the evaluation team. And of course, all the small meetings. So I think it's time to. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes, 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 uh, yes. So you, you must organize several specific meetings for Abraço, for Amparo, for. Okay, we, we need to do it. Okay, it's, I think it's time to thank uh, all the participants and everybody here. Thank you, Pablo, for being with us, even so far away. <laughs> Uh, and uh, to thank um, Magda, who's not there, Mar Marie Lucia, and Lourdes for organizing. She's there. So um, everything which is okay in this meeting is uh, Magda's responsible. Everything gets wrong also because she did it entirely alone. So thank you very much, Magda. Uh, that's the end, my friend. Não há bem que sempre dure e não há mal que não se acabe. Tchau, Pablo. Tchau. A gente se vê daqui a uma semana, não é? Você chega quando em, em, em Santiago, Pablo? É, domingo. Tarde ou cedo? Vou chegar às 11 da noite. Não, acho mais cedo. É o único voo que tinha direto. Acho que é mais cedo. Tá bom. Vemos daqui a uma semana, Pablo. Tá, um abraço. Um abraço, querido. Tchau, tchau.